Hello and welcome. You're watching NewsX. My name is Devika Chopra and today we have a very special panel with us to discuss bariatric surgery as a treatment option for obesity and related diabetes. I have with me Dr. Aparna Gobal Bhaskar. She's a bariatric and laparoscopic surgeon at Saife Apollo Spectra Curie in Namaha Hospital in Mumbai. We're also being joined by Dr. Deep Goyal. He's a senior director and HOD for Surgical Gastroenterology, Advanced Laparoscopic and Bariatric Surgery at BLK Max Super Speciality Hospital in Delhi. And we also have with us two people who've agreed to speak as patients who've undergone bariatric surgery and share their experiences with our viewers. We have with us Mr. Ashraf Khan. He's a civil contractor and Mr. Ashish Agarwal, a teacher with us on the broadcast. Let me begin this conversation with Dr. Aparna Gogol, if I can. Uh, Dr. Aparna, I want to begin by asking you, ma'am, how is diabetes linked to obesity and how common is it? So, uh, hi, Vivika. For, first of all, thanks for having me here. Uh, diabetes and obesity are, are known as twin diseases. It's actually together known as diabetes. And uh, if we look at the, uh, the uh, prevalence of obesity and diabetes, uh, you would see that there are more than 500 million people who are suffering with diabetes today in the world. And out of these, at least 60 to 90 percent are either overweight or are living with obesity. So these two diseases are very highly interlinked and it has been seen that uh, uh, now when we treat diabetes, it is also very essential to treat uh, the weight as well. So the treatment of diabetes has moved from just control of sugars to also weight management. Dr. Aparna, I want to understand from you, just like Mr. Ashraf Khan and Mr. Ashish Agarwal with us, many other patients would also be coming to you for treatment. What is the criteria for patients to undergo bariatric surgery uh, to treat comorbidity? Right, Devika. So uh, we have uh, criteria which have been set by the Obesity and Metabolic Surgery Society of India. And these are based on the body mass index or the BMI, which is a very basic formula by which uh, we calculate the degree of obesity. And if a person's BMI is more than 35, then they are eligible to get a bariatric surgery done in India. If the BMI is above 30, but they have at least two associated diseases like uh, diabetes or blood pressure or obstructive sleep apnea or anything else, then also uh, they are eligible to get bariatric surgery. Of course, uh, I mean, clinically, the doctor has to see and evaluate the patient and then uh, take the final call. But these are the guidelines which are currently uh, at, uh, being practiced in our country. All right. I'll come back to you, Dr. Parna, in just a moment. But let me bring in uh, Dr. Deep Goyal into the conversation as well. Dr. Goyal, I want to understand from you, what are the ways in which one can treat obesity and related diabetes? And how is bariatric surgery a treatment option for obese patients to manage related comorbidities? So, Vivika, thanks for asking the question. Let us divide this answer into two categories. One is surgical, one is non-surgical. So, let's, let me talk about non-surgical options. Obviously, lifestyle changes is something which we all know that will uh, reduce our weight and in turn will reduce the comorbidities like diabetes. Uh, when we say lifestyle changes, what it means is a regularly doing physical activity, you know, moderate to severe intensive activities and uh, restricting your calorie intake. These, I mean, obviously it's a common sense that, you know, if you do these two things, you are likely to reduce weight. You're likely to restrict your calories and in turn you will lose weight and you will control your diabetes also. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you can take help of medicine to control diabetes, but I would not at this point of time advise any medications to lose weight. Then comes our uh, non-surgical minimally invasive methods that you can have, you know, balloon insertion into the stomach. Again, they are for very, very specific people. I would not like to generalize them. And mm -hmm. they, they normally you can lose around 8 to 10 kilograms in six months to one year. But the problem is the moment the balloon is out, you are likely to regain all of the weight which you have lost and probably even more. So uh, again, as I said, these are not uh, for people who have very high BMI. These are for very, very selected people. And if they understand that this is just probably temporary options. And then comes obviously bariatric surgery. 
we have seen from our experience and from the literature and from the experience of others that bariatric surgery seems to be the only more lasting option mm-hmm. right and right. also understand that it also requires some uh, work from the patient side in terms of uh, some physical activity and calorie intake but this is the only option which we know of today which has more permanent effect on weight loss and on comorbidity resolution like diabetes hypertension hypercholesterolemia uh, obstructive sleep apnea infertility so dr goel of course uh, you know a lot of viewers and a lot of people in general get very scared of the word surgery when the doctor says it uh, what are some of the myths that you can bust about bariatric surgery for our viewers so first of all i would like to say that we are not doing this surgery for a person who is normal right you know so that is the one basic thing which people have to understand that they are already in a zone which is dangerous hmm. so they are not a normal individual you know actually nobody has told them that they are not normal so they are like a sitting time bomb it can explode any time so so first start from there then you will understand surgery is an option it is not a cosmetic surgery it is a surgery which is going to change your life forever it will make you healthier and probably getting slimmer and better looking is just a one of the probably just a off route of the what we are trying to do right so most of the people will consider this as a cosmetic procedure and obviously they will get scared that you know it's a, something which is seemingly per, more permanent should be undergo it no this is a life changing experience where we are saying that it will make you healthier obviously and in term you will become probably better looking much more fitter to look at so that is something which we need to understand and a uh, lot of people think that oh this is going to be a big surgery this is a minimal invasive surgery today we are even doing this surgery by robot mm-hmm. so normally we do this laparoscopically like you know general public will understand that as gall stones are done almost similar to what we get in say gall stones cesarean section hip replacement knee replacement so the other common surgeries we undergo the complication profile is similar so it is not associated with more complications and at the same time what you are taking home is a different life most of our patients if you ask them one thing the common answer is sir this operation has changed my life we regret why did we waste so much of time why did we not get it done sooner than later all right on that note uh, dr goel let me then bring in uh, two of our patients who have also uh, graciously agreed to sit with us and share their experience with the viewers let me begin with mr ashraf khan mr khan i want to begin by asking you sir how did obesity and diabetes affect your life and what was really the tipping point then that led you to seek treatment in the year 2019 i was weighing 50 uh, 113 kg okay and i was very really overweight i could not walk properly my knees were paining i was diabetic uh, around 250 280 my reading was there i was snoring very heavily and there was lots of problem no dress was fitting also very good and it was very difficult for walking also so i got operated in 2019 at that time i was weighing 113 kg at present i am weighing 75 kg so now i feel much better much relax and i can walk properly my knee pain is also reduced and i have not i have stopped taking diabetic medicine my sugar is normal now wow and although sir the weight loss journey uh, of course may differ from patient to patient how yeah. really was your recovery process after the surgery no it was very good it was very fine so slowly and uh, it, it took uh, around one and a half year to reduce that weight that much weight 40 kg approximately okay so every month there was only 4 3 kg slightly uh, none of the people knew that i had op- i got operated in my office and uh, in my relation also they didn't knew that i got operated because i, I was i been only for 5 days so i didn't tell anybody uh, if this interview goes viral they will come to know but uh, nobody knew that i got operated that was a secret so everybody is asking how did you do i got a high set i was acting and allowed like that. So it was a very uh, safe and interesting. 
All right. And Mr. Khan, at the same time, how did your family really feel about you opting for the surgery? And what do they feel now when they see this change in you? Starting, they were uh, refusing why you are going for surgery. This is not thing you go for diet. But I tried dieting and all that thing, exercise, joining games and all that. It all failed. This was the only option left for me. So I got it done on myself only, though the family was refusing. But now they also said, it's okay. It's good. The transform is very good. If you can see my before and after photo, you will come to know. I was very heavy, 113 kg. <laughs> All right, so we, we're glad that you've recovered well. On that note, let me also bring in Mr. Ashish Agarwal, uh, who's with us on the broadcast. Mr. Agarwal, you also suffering from uh, diabetes. What exactly were you doing to lose weight and manage it? Um, all the usual methods I, I used to do, like gymming and all, but uh, everything failed because, uh, because of commitment also. Um, it always failed uh, after 15 days or one month. Um, and uh, I was not, uh, as uh, Dr. Deep Goyal has said, that uh, uh, I'm, uh, I was already in the danger zone. So I opted for this surgery and um, I'm quite happy. And I feel like why I haven't opted for this for, let's say, five years ago or something. And at the same time, how do you manage uh, lifestyle changes after the surgery such as diet and exercise um uh, healthy diet is required and uh, by my past experiences i already feel that uh, yes i don't uh, i don't think that i would all go for that diet or something and uh, exercise is required around one in hour i walk every day and that's absolutely okay and nothing else and mr and Agarwal, if you could share with our viewers how really did bariatric surgery impact the quality of your life especially in dealing with some of the ailments that you've uh, mentioned before uh, ma'am, medically, I I am uh, completely changed. Now all my test reports are normal. Uh, I have never seen such test reports of anybody near to me. Also, uh, none of my relatives also have such test reports. Uh, so medically, I am good, and uh, physically also, I feel quite better, uh, more energetic, and everything is very. Well, I thank. Uh... <laughs> Mr. Ashraf Khan and Mr. Ashish Agarwal for sharing their experience, uh, you know, real life experience with our viewers. On that note, let me bring our doctors back into the conversation. Dr. Aparna, before we wrap up this conversation, ma'am, uh, any specific advice that you have for our viewers? Uh, so, yes, Devika, I think uh, what I would like to say is that uh, for everybody, I think obesity has to be, uh, we need to change our outlook when we um, view obesity. It is not a cosmetic problem. It is not something that a person is doing to himself or herself. It's not related to diet alone. So diet alone is neither the cause nor the treatment for obesity. And we have to view the disease in a proper graded manner where we, uh, you know, treat everyone um, as per the stage and the degree of obesity that they have. So right. a person who is having severe disease and severe comorbidities uh, needs to get bariatric surgery done. When the weight is high at 150, 180 kilos, it is, I think it is very bad to, you know, just keep pushing them into therapies that are not helping them. Because every day that they live with disease, they are going to be more prone to developing complications later. And of course, somebody who is of a lower weight, uh, there are different kinds of therapies. So that is, uh, we need to grade where diet and lifestyle modification works alone, where we need to introduce drugs and where we need to do surgery. So that must be very clear for everybody. And for general population, if they feel that the weight is going on increasing and they are not able to get it down without you know, uh, uh, doing, um, in spite of doing many things, I think they need to seek professional help. Um, there are uh, many qualified dietitians and there are many bariatric surgery units. Wherever they reach out for help, they will be guided properly, but there should be no stigma attached to seeking treatment for obesity. So that should be uh, very, very clear uh, to everyone. And that Dr. Gail, 
All right, Dr. Goel, same question to you, sir, before we wrap up this conversation. Any specific advice that you have for our viewers? I would say, as Aparna has very rightly said, that obesity is a curse, not only for the person, but for the people who are associated with that person and to the society in turn. You see, there are so many, so much of burden socially, psychologically, financially, emotionally, on the patient and in turn on the society and the family. We need to understand that. So I would say that we should not take the surgery lightly. Mm -hmm. You should change your lifestyle sincerely, try out. But if you think you can't manage, then there is no stigma attached. That don't be ashamed to seek help. Go for whatever is available, whatever your doctor advises you. And I think family needs to support that person in the whole journey. And again, as I said before, it's a life changing. Imagine, I'll give you a small incidents. Imagine the plight of a young mother who is obese. And, you know, uh, her son says, don't come to the parent teacher meeting mother. You right. look fat. You know, just it's such a simple thing which can happen to any one of us. But look at the plight of that mother, what she will be thinking. And we don't understand that how that statement triggers the psychological impact on that particular person. You know, and that person becomes introvert, that per person becomes aloof, doesn't want to go to the parties, doesn't want to socialize. So right. that itself becomes a, you know, point where that person needs help. Obviously, I'm not saying that that person should go for surgery immediately. That person needs help, needs help to reduce weight. Now, as we have discussed already, there are various ways of losing weight in whichever category that person falls and, you know, what they can do, they should do that. But basic thing is we have, we all together need to fight obesity because it's a curse, not only to the person, but to the society. Well, on that note, I thank all of our panelists for joining us. Viewers, we were discussing, we took a deep dive into bariatric surgery as a treatment option for obesity and related diabetes. We've had two doctors who've given us a lot of good advice, and we've also had with us uh, two patients who've undergone the surgery, and they've shared their life experiences with us. Thank you so much to everyone for joining us. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.